Hello, welcome back to my channel. Today is hopefully the last day that I sit here and talk to you guys about books that I read last year in 2020. I posted my favorite reads of 2020 video thinking that it was going to be the only kind of wrap up of my like 2020 reading that I was going to do on this channel. But then on Tuesday, I posted a reading vlog that I filmed back in November and I realized that I haven't actually done a wrap up for what I read in November and also December. So that's what we're going to do today. I have my old bullet journal here with my reading log in the back. Uh, we're just gonna go off of that. I don't have my like Goodreads reviews or anything of these books. I haven't checked over any of them. Um, so it's going to be interesting to see what I remember about these books and what I think about them now, two to three months later. It's only been two months. Two months later. Two to three months? Time isn't real. I know off the top of my head I read a lot in November. I think I read over 20 books and then I don't think I read as much in December. I know about halfway through the month I read a book and I disliked it so much that I didn't read anything else until January. Either way, I'm pretty sure I have quite a few books, so let's just get into it. The first two books that I want to talk about are both from the same series, and they were both rereads for me, and I think I gave them both five stars. And this is The Score and the Deal by L. Kennedy. These are books one and three in L. Kennedy's Off Campus series. This is a new adult romance series based around a university ice hockey team. Each book follows a different character from this ice hockey team and their love interests. The score is the one I read first and this is the third book in the series. This is my favorite of the series. I love this story so so much. I love both of the characters. I love Ellie. I love how confident she is not only in herself but also her sexuality and her sex life. I also love Dean. I just love how carefree and positive he is but I also really love how at the end of the story he has to go through a really really hard time like the first real hard time of his life and I really like how that's dealt with in the story. I really like how it's done and I think it adds so much to his character. I just adore this story so much. I love Ellie and Dean's relationship. I think they're great together. It's very steamy, very sexy, very fun. Just a great light easy read. Not so much with The Deal. Uh, the Deal is a little bit more serious I think in my opinion. That's the first book in the Off Campus series and this follows is it Hannah? Hannah and Garrett. Basically Hannah agrees to tutor Garrett for a paper that they're both taking and in exchange for tutoring him Garrett agrees to let Hannah use him for clout, tell people that they're like dating, that kind of thing. This definitely isn't the best thing that has ever been written by no means but definitely just like fun kind of comfort reads for me. The next book I read uh, was a sequel to a book that I read in 2019 and that is The Trader Queen by is it Daniel? Danielle L. Jensen? No. Yes. The first book is called The Bridge Kingdom which I think I really enjoyed. I gave it I want to say four stars maybe five stars even. I won't talk too much about the plot for The Trader Queen obviously because it is a sequel and I think The Bridge Kingdom is kind of popular. It's a fantasy romance and I think the first book was really really great, really really interesting, great setup, but I think in this one it was definitely too much fantasy and not enough romance for me. I love fantasy and I love romance, but if you're going to bring them together I want a good balance between the two. I want it to be epic but I also want it to be steamy. This was not it. This was not it. Great plot. Like genuinely incredible plot for this sequel. I was super invested. I read through this really really quickly but I was definitely just let down by the lack of romance. It kind of comes in at the end of the story. Definitely kind of there are a few moments, a few scenes but overall just not what I was wanting. I gave this three stars. The next few books I want to talk about are the second and third book in the... is it Fix Her Up series, I think? So this is Love Her Loser and Tools of Engagement by Tessa Bailey. I read the first book 
in 2019 and then the second and the third book I think they both came out in 2020 I think they were both technically new releases but I read them both in November and I was genuinely impressed by how much I liked them I don't think I was that blown away by the first book the second book especially shocked me because this was a second chance romance uh with an already married couple which isn't something that i read a lot of like either of those tropes i'm not really a huge fan of second chance romances and not that i have anything against married couples i think usually just most of my romances that i read they become married that it, it like never starts with an already married couple but this book was just amazing i laughed so much and it was so so sweet also loved how couples therapy was involved in the second chance romance therapy plays a big part in this story and i think it was just perfect like really really great something that i definitely would like to see more of and it really worked for both of these characters also their relationship was just actually very very sweet. I will say my favorite in the series has to go to Tools of Engagement though. This follows Bethany and Wes and essentially Bethany really wants to start flipping her own houses. Her whole family works on housing. Bethany is the interior designer I believe but she has for so long now wanted to actually fix up her own house and so she just decides to do it and Wes is actually working for her brother's building team he's like a builder on the team for her brother and he decides to leave Bethany's brother and go work with Bethany and help her fix up her first house these two very much have like a bantery hateful relationship which just turns into the best romance I loved this so much also surprising because there is a child in this story and usually children throw me off I I don't usually I'm not usually a fan of children in romance stories I usually think that they're annoying and I find the like trope of like the kid fixing the relationship very annoying just kids in general annoying but the kid in this book cute this whole book was just like everything for me and I loved it five stars the next book I want to talk about is one that I talked about in my favorite books of 2020 video and that is The Hating Game by Sally Thorne I've already talked about this book legitimately could be the best romance book I have ever read in my whole entire life if you haven't read this yet please go read it it won't disappoint you and if it does then I'm sorry. <laughs> I can't do anything about that. I really wish I could because I genuinely love this book so much. I mentioned in my favorites of 2020 video that I really loved not only the relationship and the romance but the writing style. I was very very impressed by it. Everything about this book was impressive honestly. I don't want to talk about this too much because I feel like if I could just sit here for hours and gush about this book but quickly this follows Lucy and Joshua. They both work for different companies but their companies have merged and now they have to work together. They share an office and they hate each other. But then they don't. Everything about this is just perfection. Something I didn't mention in my favorites of 2020 video though is that it is like it's been I think they've actually finished uh there's a movie adaptation coming of this book and when I tell you I'm scared I am so so nervous to see what that film is going to be like I really don't want it to ruin the story for me I have I have faith like I have hope but also a lot of adaptations just are not it so I am scared but I have my fingers crossed that it's going to be a really good movie. Okay so I'm not going to talk about all of these books because there are too many and I think I'm going to just do a video on this author in general but over November and December I went through and basically read all of Tessa Dare's backlist. I think there's only two books now that I haven't read of hers and I know that she has a new one coming out this year. I think I'm going to wait for that book to come out and then I think I might just do a whole video on all of Tessa Dare's books but I went and read pretty much all of Tessa Dare's books over in November and December. Let me just count how many books that is. 10. I read 10 of her books over November and December because I've already read some of them earlier on throughout the year 
but I went and read all the rest of the ones that I hadn't read so I read 10 of her books over November and December. A few other books that I'm not going to talk about uh, is the Bargainer trilogy by Laura Thalassa. This was the trilogy that I did my second episode of Smart Salon on. This was a paranormal fantasy romance. If you want to know my thoughts on that go watch the Smart Salon video. I gave the first two books three stars, I gave the last book a two star. Overall a totally fine trilogy, didn't hate it, didn't love it. Another book I don't really want to talk about too much because I mentioned it not only in my favorites video but I also just released my reading vlog for it and that is The Burning God by R.F. Kwan. This, when I say this book, this trilogy, destroyed me, I mean it. Genuinely, I have so many emotions about this trilogy and especially this final book. I don't even know if I entirely captured it in my reading vlog but the just the amount of emotion that I had reading this book this absolutely would have sent me into a reading slump uh if I hadn't have had other videos to make anyway absolutely fantastic if you haven't read the Poppy War trilogy definitely check it out as I've said I think Every time I've mentioned this series, please check trigger warnings before going into this trilogy because it is a lot. Grim dark fantasy, very, very like heavy emphasis on the dark, but absolutely incredible. Cannot recommend this enough. RF Kwan is also like my idol. The fact that she published this trilogy, she wrote it and published it while also getting her masters at Oxford, or was it her PhD? I think it was her masters. Either way, all during a pandemic. Absolute queen. Apart from that though, I also read two other romances in November. I read One to Watch. I can't remember who this is by, but this was a Goodreads finalist for the romance category in the Goodreads Choice Awards for 2020. And I read this and the next book because I wanted to read a few more of the romance books before I voted for the finalists. And while I think that this wasn't the best romance book I've ever read, this was a really incredible book and surprised me so much. I gave this five stars. This book follows B, who is a plus-sized fashion blogger, not model, blogger, and one night she drunkenly reviews this dating reality TV show on her blog. She does a huge like essay about how horrible the representation is in the show, how she wishes that there were more plus size people, more body diversity, also more racial diversity, and even more queer representation on the show. Her review blows up and she actually gets invited to be the next main person on this reality TV show. From what I can tell it's kind of like The Bachelor. She goes on and she has like a bunch of men who each week she has to like send someone home and then she'll eventually like find the one who she gets to marry. I've never watched The Bachelor but from what I can tell it seems kind of like that. So this book essentially just follows B as she goes on this reality show and dates all of these guys, what it's like, uh, not only as like a plus sized person but also as just like a regular person who's then like suddenly on TV and dating all of these guys. I will say this book was a little bit hard to read at times. There's definitely like fat phobic content in this book, like explicit fat phobic content. It's kind of like a mixed media story so for example we get like tweets put in there, we get kind of like interviews, reviews, that sort of thing. And like when I say it was genuinely really really difficult to read, I don't think, um, I don't think everyone would love that about this book. And like understandable if that is not for everyone, like it's very hard to read. And I think that is also why I didn't think it was like the best romance book that I've ever read. It was just like a little bit too harsh at times, but also she's dating all of these guys on this reality TV show. And I think maybe that like I just... I just didn't like that. I wish there had been kind of more of a focus on the romance. It's very much like B and her personal journey, which was incredible to read. Like I gave this book five stars because I think there were so many important things said in this book. Um, and the commentary on our society was just so real, so harsh, but so real. So a great read. Uh, I think there are some super important things that are said in this book, but not the best romance in my personal opinion. And then I also read You Had Me at Ola. Again, I cannot remember who this is by. 
Um, but this is a romance that is set on the production of a telenovela and so we follow the two main leads as they kind of fall in love in real life but also they are playing lovers on screen. Actually I think they're playing exes, ex-husband and wife but it's kind of like a rekindled relationship. When I read this in November I gave this four stars because I really loved it, I loved the drama, I loved the the romance. I thought it was really great and really steamy. I also really liked how we got to see the relationship on screen and off screen and I also liked how we got to like see the episodes. There were like pieces of script in the book which I really enjoyed as an old drama and media student. I thought that was just like super fun. But now that it's been a bit, it, I don't know if four stars was the right one. I think it's kind of an average read but I definitely still really really enjoyed it. And I would definitely recommend it if you're looking for a romance with kind of older leads and also something that's like a little bit dramatic but still very fun and lighthearted. That's pretty much all that I read in November. I know I read pretty much exclusively romance but a lot of romance in November. Moving on to December, the first book that I read I'm not going to talk too long about. It was The Invisible Life of Addie LaRue. Actually, I have it. Hang on. I have it back here. I literally just put it away. I talked about this in my favorites video. I loved this so much. So this book is entirely about Addie LaRue and Addie wants to live her life. She wants to live an amazing life and all that her life will really be is her being married off to someone and being a wife and that is not at all all what she wants and so she sells her soul to the devil and essentially she gets promised that she can live for as long as she wants and she can live however she wants and when she's done living she will give her soul to this god. The catch is though that she can live forever, she's immortal but no one can remember who she is and so we see her going through her life being invisible the Invisible Life of Addie LaRue, but after 300 years we see that she meets someone who actually remembers her, for one. She tries to steal a book from a bookstore and the guy actually remembers her and he comes out and he's like, hey you can't just take that and she is shocked because usually what would happen is she would leave the store and immediately everyone would forget her. They wouldn't know that she'd stolen anything. But this guy sees her stealing and he chases after her and he remembers her. This is just like, this is just an incredibly like emotional story, very character driven, um, beautifully written. I'm not gonna say too much because I pretty much have said all of this in my favorites video, but this book was amazing. Five stars. The next book I read was Crazy Stupid Bromance. I think this is by Alyssa K. Adams. I think that's her name. And I'm pretty sure this is the third book in the Bromance Book Club series. I gave this three stars. The first two books in the series I think I gave five or four stars. I really really enjoyed them but this one just didn't really do it for me that much. The whole series, the whole series follows a group of guys who have basically made a romance book club. Uh, they read romance books to help them with their relationships pretty much. And this book follows a guy who technically like isn't in the book club yet. I want to say his name is Noah but I can't really remember either of the main characters names because the story didn't really stand out to me. But this guy has basically been in love with his best friend for like ages and his best friend has been in love with him for ages as well. The classic like pining for each other, we're just too scared to say anything because we don't want to ruin the friendship, that kind of relationship, friends to lovers. I actually really really liked the relationship in this. It was like super cute and I think like the transition from friends to lovers was really great. It wasn't too drawn out but also it was like teased like just long enough so you were like super invested in them getting together. The downfall of this book, the plot sucked and I hated every single other character in this story. Everyone else just pissed me off so much and it really brought down my general reading experience for this book. It was just like even though the relationship was super cute it was just too frustrating to read everything else and the good parts of the book were just ruined um, which really sucks and that's why I gave it three stars. Okay in December I read two really bad historical romances and we're gonna talk about one of them for a second 
and that is When Beauty Tamed the Beast. I cannot remember who this is by. I gave this one star. This is a retelling of Beauty and the Beast, um, which surprisingly wasn't the biggest issue. The biggest issue that I want to talk about first is the writing. I hated the writing style with a passion. I just couldn't get into it. It felt, I don't know if like too formal is the right word. I mean, yeah, too formal is the right word. It felt way too fancy and not in like a cute historical way, more in like a, they would be having sex and it was basically like reading an anatomy book kind of way, which isn't hot at least to me. So immediately the steaminess of this book was brought down. But then this also is like in all the other parts of the books too, like they all speak like so formally and it just felt unreal and it just made all of the interactions feel so forced and so like fake uh, and maybe it is historically accurate, you know, maybe that is how they would have talked back in the day whenever this was said, I don't fucking know. Either way, I didn't fucking like it. And then... <sighs> And then there were just the characters. I don't think I had an issue with the main heroine, at least I can't remember any issues with her from like memory. The main guy, however, the beast, if you will, um, he, he was like, he wasn't even that horrible, but he was fucking annoying. He's a doctor, but I think he was also in the war. He's like a war veteran. Uh, and I believe he's lost a leg or part of his leg at least has been like chopped off I think below I think from the knee down he like lost his leg I think honestly can the details are hazy I blocked this from my mind immediately but just like the kind of like but just kind of like the underlying reading it kind of made it seem like he was a beast because he was amputated um I'm not saying that's how it actually was presented but that's personally the vibes that it gave off for me which I mean you're not a beast because you've lost part of your leg. Sorry to break it to you. That's like part of his deal. He's like, I'm I'm like horrible. I've lost part of my leg. I'm like a really grumpy, like disgusting guy now. And this girl comes and like is basically sent off to marry him. And he's surprised that she doesn't find him disgusting because he has half a leg. Like I just, just the whole thing was just so, so bad. Oh my God, I remember. The bit at the end, holy shit. So, so the whole thing is that the guy thinks he's really ugly because he's lost half a leg and he's a grumpy war veteran. And this girl comes to marry him because no one else will take him. And she is like the most beautiful girl in the world. But at the end, she gets like really, really sick, like deadly sick. And she basically gets this like rash head to toe and it ruins her looks. And at the end, she just like, she just becomes the worst character because she's like, I'm hideous now. No one's ever going to love me. Oh my God, I'm disgusting. No one can even look at me. And from what I can remember of the descriptions, it literally just looks like she was sunburnt. Which just like, just the whole vibes of this book were so bad. Terrible. One star. Would not recommend. Mm-mm horrible. We're gonna move on to better things. Uh, in December I read a book that I've been wanting to read for I think about two years now, like in 2020 and 2019 for like two years, um, and I have it. Just get the dust off it. And that is Middle Game by Seanan Maguire. This, this is like a sci-fi fantasy. It follows these twins, Dodger and Roger, but also a bunch of other twins. And basically, Dodger and Roger are gods, pretty much. Not like, not really, like, not really, but also, yes. This was such a cool book, and I put off reading it for ages. One, because I actually couldn't get it in New Zealand for a really, really long time. And then I put it off because I was really scared that it wasn't going to live up to my hopes and dreams and this wasn't like a five star read i gave it four stars but it was definitely like really really great some of the best storytelling i've ever read i really like sean mcguire's writing but also how the story was told so good so clever like this is a really clever book i was reading this and i was like wow i'm smart <laughs> which like might sound really dumb but like the science fiction part of this just very intelligent, all very, very cool. 
also really loved the magic in this i loved the story i loved the characters overall really really great now that i'm sitting here and trying to talk about it i feel like i don't have that much more to say other than that it was really really great and i really liked it and that is why this is a four star read and not a five star read but i would highly recommend this to like anyone and everyone i then went and read another al kennedy book i read the dare um this is the fourth book in the like kind of sequel series to the off-campus series there's off the off-campus series and then this one i think it's called briar u or something like that it's set at the same university set around like the same hockey team but like the next like generation like all the guys from the first series have like graduated and so it's like the next hockey team that the university has i gave this book three stars i really wish i'd liked it more than i did and it was definitely like cute enough kind of like a fake dating scenario um which i absolutely love so definitely points to it for that the one thing that bothered me about this book was the main character and her relationship with her body I definitely think that we need more like I definitely think we need more diversity in books and main characters in general um, and I understand that it was from this character's point of view so obviously we were getting like her internal thoughts what she thought about herself all that kind of stuff but just the way that she was like I'm not a size zero therefore I have to watch everything that I eat like I have to be like I'm really self-conscious and I have to like think about what I wear and I know that this is like a reality for like so many people like I'm not saying that I didn't like the fact that she had like body issues or self-confidence issues like that's not my problem at all I just personally couldn't handle the whole like oh I'm only eating like a hard-boiled egg for breakfast because I need to watch my figure like that kind of mindset i know lots of people deal with it i personally just didn't want to read that at the time like just before christmas it was not the mood i don't know it just made me personally uncomfortable i didn't want to read that kind of stuff at the time that i read this so it brought down the general vibe of the book i think that was like my main thing it was just like very an average romance and an average read overall and then like that kind of negative self-talk just wasn't doing it for me at the time so i gave this a three stars i could see people really really liking this and i could see people really relating to the main character just wasn't it for me and that's fine the next book i read i also have actually and i feel like what i have to say about this might shock a lot of people that book is the song of achilles by madeline miller i finally read it i finally read the song of achilles was it incredible yes was it as incredible as i was hoping it to be no i gave this four stars and i know that everyone loves this book i know that everyone adores this book i know that people have sobbed over this book and this has been the book that has gotten people into reading i know that this is just like th this is just like such a well-loved book and i felt so sad that i just couldn't feel the same amount of hype as it everyone else seems to have for this i did really really love it i did like i think it's a really great book overall but i didn't cry i don't want to say i didn't love the relationship between patroclus and achilles if that's how you say patroclus but also at the same time i kind of didn't i don't like i did but i didn't love it as much as everyone else seemed to just in case you're wondering this is basically a retelling of the story of achilles it was definitely a very very quick read which i wasn't expecting i fled through this it's very very gripping very very fast paced beautiful writing and really great characters i will say that um but unfortunately very predictable and i mean i I'm not like a classics geek. I remember much of any of the stories. Really, I thought Achilles was the guy who flew in the air and got too close to the sun, but I think that's someone else. But from what I can tell, everyone was very upset with the end of this book, like how this book ends. And I'm not gonna lie, I saw it coming from like halfway through the book. So it didn't really hit much of a punch for me. I was just kind of like, yep, that was the outcome i knew this was going to happen which kind of sucked i think I, like i think it, it it wasn't shocking to me and i think it would have been great if it was a little bit shocking to me i think that would have been what made it a five stars for me i gave this four stars i did really like it i do think it's really beautiful 
I am just sad I didn't love it as much as everyone else does. And then the final book that I read in 2020. And this was the other really bad historical romance that I read and this was the book that stopped me from reading anything else. To be fair I finished this on Christmas, I thought I read it earlier in the month, but I mean Christmas there's not really that much left of the year after Christmas so I guess it's fine but after finishing this book I genuinely just felt no desire to read anything else. This put me off reading for a good week. And that is The Duke and I by Julia Quinn. For anyone who doesn't know, this is the book that the Netflix show Bridgerton is based on. And I was so disappointed in this book, mainly because of the rape scene that is included towards the end. If I can remember correctly, it is chapter 18 that this happens in. It was just literally so disgusting to read, like so horrific, just so uncomfortable, and then not even discussed afterwards. Like barely, barely talked about, barely touched upon, and that just ruined the whole thing for me. And honestly, I was really enjoying it up until that point. Well, actually up until about 50%. So basically this book, we follow Daphne who is the oldest of the Bridgerton daughters and she is coming out into society, she's looking for a husband. And she meets Simon who has recently become a duke after his father died and he's just come back to London and he's friends with Daphne's older brothers I believe. But they come to an arrangement that Simon will pretend to court Daphne both for their own personal reasons. So Simon he doesn't want to marry at all so he wants to take himself out of the field, like out of the options for the girls looking for a husband. And as a duke he has a lot of clout so Daphne wants to use his clout basically to get better proposals essentially. She's hoping that guys will get like jealous that she's with a duke and they will come and propose to her. I love a fake dating scenario, love it to bits. I was eating this up but then halfway through, not to spoil anything, they get married. And most historical romances end in a marriage, like most of them do, but the ones where the romance happens like halfway through the story you can usually count that the last like 50% is just not going to be as good as yes, the first 50%. At least that's my experience, at least that's my opinion. I don't think I've read a good historical romance where they get married halfway through. Haven't found it yet. And this was no exception. As soon as I got married, immediately my interest just dropped. And then chapter 18 happened, the rape happened. Absolutely horrible. I will say that they made it not like better in the show but it's definitely like less uncomfortable in the book simon is drunk out of his mind and like very very clearly we see him telling daphne to stop and daphne we are reading it from her point of view we see her going no i am going to carry on with this super horrible and then after that as i said barely talked about simon leaves he doesn't want anything to do with daphne understandable but that's like the most we get of it. He, they like get back together in the end and they're happy and it's really, it just, it just was ridiculous. It was literally so bad and ruined a perfectly good romance. I really wanted to give this a one star because of that but I gave it two stars because I did genuinely enjoy the start so much. But terrible. Absolute garbage. Fucking horrible. Two stars so mad that that was my last read of the year but after reading that I genuinely did not want to pick up another book. I did go and watch Bridgerton though and uh it was fine but that's it that's all of the books that I read in November and December. I know this wrap up is coming like kind of late and I also know that it's probably going to be really long and it feels weird to be posting this now knowing that I'm going to be posting a January wrap up quite soon but that's fine. If you've read any of these books, as always, please come discuss them with me, um, especially Bridgerton. I've seen a few people who really like The Duke and I, and I'm interested. Please tell me what you see in it. I, I'm curious. Um, or if you've watched Bridgerton, come tell me your thoughts. But that is it. Hopefully that is all of the videos where I am talking about, like, last year books and things that happened. Here on out we should be going on to new things and hopefully I will be bringing that new content to you guys sometime soon. So until then, bye!